A light shines in the darkness. What could it be? The sound of angels' wings. What could it mean? A baby born in a stable. Who could it be? Come to Bethlehem and see. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Bethlehem Lutheran Church's Christmas worship. We are so glad to have you here with us today. As we move throughout this worship, we will hear the story of the birth of Jesus Christ alongside of the gift of music from our Bethlehem Lutheran choirs. We hope that this service blesses you in this Christmas season and brings warmth to your heart with the story of God's love come to earth for us. Let us begin our worship service with a moment of peace to center our hearts and minds for this time together. We gather together then for worship, the church living in and outside of this building, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. We begin our service with the voices of our Bethlehem Youth Choir. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. We begin our service with a reading from the Old Testament, from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah writes, beginning in chapter 9, verse 2, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of our burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. 
we now receive the gift of special music from our Bethlehem Senior Choir.
please join me in our prayer of the day. O wondrous God of the stars, we come tonight with breathless wonder to see the babe who will change our lives. We hear the names Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, and we are in awe. You have touched the earth this night with your unconditional love. Emmanuel, God with us, touch us. Touch our hearts and minds and souls. May we never tire of this story. May we never take it for granted. May this night be wonder-filled again. Amen. And so we hear this story told year after year from the Gospel of Luke about Christ becoming God with us, Emmanuel. We begin in chapter 2. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace among those whom he favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them the gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to each of you on this wondrous Christmas worship. In the middle of our gospel text, Luke tells us that after Mary gave birth to Jesus, they laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. But for those of you who have had children, you know that laying him in the manger was not the end of the evening. Away in a manger may tell us that the little Lord Jesus no crying he makes, but my guess is that Jesus, even if he didn't cry, did not spend the entire night in the manger. My time with parents in the NICU and in the family birth center and with friends and family who have had their own babies tells me a different story. Rarely, if a mother was able to be holding their child, would they not be especially their firstborn. And if they were in as unpredictable of a place as a stable, I would think that they would especially be holding on to their baby, especially if it were the child of God. So Jesus may have laid in the manger while Mary rested or while Joseph was busy helping her. But I also believe that there were moments where his mother was holding him in her arms gazing into the eyes of God. And I also believe there were moments where Joseph held this baby and looked upon his wife in awe. He was the one who helped her deliver Jesus into this world. 
He was the first one to hold the Son of God as he took his first breath. He held Jesus in his arms, pulled him toward his chest, cleaned him and looked into his eyes, knowing that he was holding God with us. 1,200 years after this first event in the manger, and in hopes to encourage others to reflect on the importance and joy of Christmas, we go to Italy with St. Francis of Assisi, who also set up a simple bed for the Son of God. In the town of Greccio, Francis found a simple stable and made ready a manger for the baby, and also had an ox and a donkey brought to this spot. The simple scene surrounded by those in the town and some of Francis's community gathered around this stable is described by Bonaventure, who is one of Francis's biographers in this way. The wood echoed with their voices, and that night was made radiant and solemn with many bright lights, with tuneful and sonorous praises. St. Francis, filled with tender love, stood before the manger, bathed in tears and overflowing with joy. At one point in their worship and singing and praise, many saw a holy child appear in the manger, fast asleep. St. Francis knelt down to the manger and embraced the child in his arms, waking it as Francis held and adored him. And this, dear beloveds, was the first nativity we Christians had, created to stir up in the hearts of those gathered around this joy and wonder of Christmas in this simple scene, culminating in the child of Bethlehem sleeping in a manger, then being embraced not just in the arms of his mother Mary and Joseph, but in the arms of St. Francis and believers and faithful ever since that first starry night. We remember this first nativity and have been celebrating and creating our own nativities for the 800 years ever since, although we may not have known its origins in this medieval town. However, Rather than finding Jesus in the arms of humanity in our mangers, in many of our own nativities, we echo Luke's simple phrase, and we place Jesus in the manger. We set him in the center of the nativity, surrounded but not touched. Mary kneeling at his side, Joseph standing at the other, the animals in their distance in the back, looking on lovingly, and the shepherds called in from the field, gazing behind the holy family with a few sheep in tow, standing in awe of this gift of God given to humankind. Even on our altar today, in the midst of our Advent wreath, we see the Holy Family and this same scene set up, Jesus lying apart in the manger and viewed by those around him. Now this is where God has been for thousands of years of worship even before Jesus, worshiped at an altar, in a tent, away from most of humanity, being something other above, and certainly not near. We think of the names given to God in the Old Testament, meant to show power and majesty and this force of love that could never be simplified into just one thing, but was certainly majestic and above us. But there is one name that we hold with us today, a name given by the prophet Isaiah hundreds of years before Christ's birth. And that one is Emmanuel, God with us. This is why Jesus came, why Jesus entered into our world of suffering and brokenness on that Christmas Eve. Jesus did not come in the form of a baby to be born in a stable and laid in a manger to be set apart and viewed, venerated again on a slightly less significant altar. God came to be with us. God moved from the altar into our arms, to us, 
to be flesh and blood and bone and tears and giggles with us. The joy of Christmas is not only that we see God with our own eyes, but that Jesus came to be held in our own hands, to be heard and smelled and to be with us. Jesus did not come to be set and revered in a manger. Jesus came so that we may hold the love of God close as Joseph and Mary and Francis did to weep with joy, knowing that God has come for us, with us, and to know it is true because he is here in our arms, warming us as we warm him in return, snuggled underneath the infinite stars in the sky, twinkling reminders of the angels who came to proclaim his birth. So today and all days, Go and meet Jesus in the manger. Hold Jesus in your arms and bear witness to the promise of God come here. Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. I invite you to reflect on these words as we are gifted with music from our bell choir.
Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue our worship with our prayers this evening. We pray together for the church, the world, and all of those who are in need in this Christmas time. Please take a moment of silence to prepare your hearts. Emmanuel, God with us. On this holy night, we praise the newborn who fulfills the promise to our ancestors. We come as we are to a place as ordinary as can be, to witness the most extraordinary miracle of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, on this holy night, we join with the animals in the fields and those at the trough as fellow members of your redeemed creation, there to witness the birth of our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God, on this holy night, the world pauses breathless to hear the good news of great joy for all the people, the Messiah who has come to save us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this holy night, God, there are those who find it difficult to rejoice in the grip of illness, grief, or trials, who look to the Christ child as their only comfort. We offer these people to you today, asking you to wrap your loving arms around them as they embrace the Christ child. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this holy night, we hear again the story we know so well that we could tell it in our sleep. But now we are sent out glorifying and praising you for all we have heard and seen. We stand with all of the witnesses to your birth, including those who have gone before us in faith, who now enjoy eternal communion with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep us close to your cradle and hear our grateful prayers, O God, even as we trust in your tender mercy. We pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We receive then a final gift of special music from our youth choir and congregation. And I invite you to join in as well if you know the song.
receive this blessing. Go now in wonder. Go to bring light to those in the darkness, joy to those who can find no joy, wonder to a world steeped in realism. Go with the songs of angels in your ears and the love of God in your heart. Go and spread the word, the babe of Bethlehem, God with us, is born for all. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Christmas blessings and joy to each and every one of you and your families. We hope this service has blessed you and that you have time to know and feel the love and peace that Christ, God with us, brings to us. We wish you a happy Christmas season. Amen.